Hi YouTubers, welcome to one of my videos. I'm going to talk about this display. This is called a Chinese knot and it runs from USB and um, I make these and other light displays. This one's about um, six inches that way, or about four inches. And um, on a previous video I mentioned if anybody would like one of these, I don't mind making them but if you want one you'll have to pay for the postage and cost of the component parts and to so say I've got another one here to make another one here and I'll make the box as well if necessary so just drop me an email if you want one of these I would imagine they're going to be about £10 including postage as a guess but I don't know until I've made another one and worked it out because I've you know, I have to buy these from, from China and then have to get the wood and some perspex and things like that and the postage cost. So I think they're going to be about £10, something like that. And they run from um, 5 volt USB. And this just shows you it working. They can be programmed to do other things, other effects. But I'm not sure how you do it, to be perfectly honest. I'm not into programming. And this just shows you it working. But I've, I've made other displays, like the hourglass. And the hearts I've got in my motorhome, the breathing hearts, I can make those as well if necessary. Now just to show you what's involved, this is the one... I've just showed you working and all those electrical connections on the back have to be soldered and all the components have to be inserted into all these holes and this is what it looks like the kit so every single one of these components has to be soldered with into this board or weldering as they call it in some countries so that's my workload to put that into there so it gives you an indication of what's involved. We interrupt this YouTube channel to bring you a news flash. It's absolutely pissed it down a minute ago. I've started putting some of the components in. And what you do, you poke them through in the right direction because they have a positive and negative on these. And the positive is the long wire so you have to put them through the right way and they also have a flat on them these LEDs and then you put so many in sold them cut the wires I've put so many in sold them cut the wires on this continuous process and uh, time consuming but um, quite satisfying the best one I've found is to poke them through and bend them like that so they're holding the board and if you lay it flat on the surface it pushes them up against the circuit board and then solder one wire on, on every one of these you poke through and then by holding them with your finger underneath you heat it up again and make sure it's completely flat otherwise it can be crooked and it's a bit silly that's what I'm going to do. Now to solder them in, I'll use an Antex soldering iron. I've had this for years. Uh, made in England. It's rated at 25 watts. It's got a standard tip on the end. And then the solder I use, let's, I'll hang that on my toolbox like that. It's a good, good soldering iron stand. And I'll use um, this very thin soldering wire, which is a multi-core, and uh, it normally would be a tin lead alloy, but this is modern solder. I don't think there's any lead in it at all, this solder wire. When you're soldering, when you finish soldering, you need to keep cut the excess length of legs off. Now one tip I've learnt 
with to do with wire cutters there's quite a lot of different varieties of wire cutters but you have to ensure the wire cutters you're buying will cut steel and the reason why I'm saying that is years ago when I first got into electronics the leads on electronic components were copper nowadays they're steel and to prove that if you've got anything that's magnetic just put a magnet on the wires that you've cut off and this is a magnetic screwdriver and you can see all the wires I've cut off these components are sticking together but it's because they're steel wires where years ago they used to be copper now for military applications as far as I'm aware they prefer copper very simply steel wires can rust and make bad electrical connections so I believe that military applications they still use copper wires or components that have got copper leads another tip for you make sure you don't drop any of these in, in your carpet you know, when you're doing this if you've got a carpeted floor because one day you'll drop some and won't find them and another day they'll stick in your toes as you walk around bare feet now going back to the soldering I'm not going to show you me building this completely because it'd be bored out your brains by the time I finished but when I went to um, technical college and we had to make things as part of our course electronics course if you got more than three solder blobs or um, like welding you get the weld balls spit and the same with soldering you can get little very very small balls of solder I, don't know, I might have one here I don't know like that if you got more than three on your finished project you would fail the exam and that's how strict it was obviously the circuit had, had to work and there shouldn't be more than a component put in three times so you have to do it right first time and three of those obviously that's a big one but if there's small there is a small one there if you've got three of those on your board for the exam that was a failure okay more quickly to do with the um, light display I'll just give you an indication of um, how much soldering is needed um, for just the red LED lights there's 162 sold hand soldering joints have to be made to fit these in the board there's nine soldering joints for the switches that are involved with this board there's 28 hand soldering joints for the socket and the, what's called a printed circuit board header connection there's four soldering joints so in, in a total there's 203 hand soldering joints have to be done on this kit we've now been for our daily exercise which is just to walk around the block and um, I thought I'd have another go at my bike I wasn't happy with this design I've come up with with these and the reason why I wasn't happy with them although it work, works okay if it comes undone that bolt this bracket I made could swing out and go in the spokes and jam the front wheel up and throw you over the handlebars so I put an extra support spring in so if this bolt comes undone it can't swing down and go in the wheel so I'm quite pleased with that it's another modification okay youtubers I think that's about it for this video um, gives us give you an insight to a, a day during lockdown what we're up to keeping busy James will be doing some painting 
and I've been making electronic kits, fixing things, sorted the bike out for the second time. I've improved my braking uh, modification so that if the bolt comes undone, they, the metal brackets don't go into the wheel. Um, I'll have to start work on Jane soon to make hers the same. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like.